An example of a covert participant observer studies was conducted by a reporter named Nelly Bly. She faked having a mental illness para may admit siya sa isang women's lunatic asylum para malaman niya kung ano ang ginagawang treatment ng mga doctors sa mga may mental illness. And when she was admitted to the asylum, she found out that patients were forced to take ice-cold baths and remain in wet clothes for hours. They were also forced to sit still on benches without speaking or moving for 12 hours straight. Their foods were even rotten meat, inaamag na tinapay, and maduming tubig. Those who complained or resisted were beaten up by the staff, and some staff also treat the patients with sexual violence. This discovery led Nellie Bly to publish her book, 10 Days in a Madhouse. Pag overt naman, the researcher reveals his or true identity and purpose to the group and asks permission to observe. Like for example, you wanted to know the lifestyle of a tribe. Pwede ka magpaalam muna sa tribe leader na magkakunda ka ng study and you should tell them kung para saan yung study na gagawin mo. Usually, in this kind of situation, kailangan mong makipamuhay or makisalamuha sa mga tao for how many days to gain their trust so that you can get accurate data. By the way, class, reminder, are different from field experiment. So field studies, di ba wala kang pwedeng i-manipulate? You will just be an observer. So field experiment naman, you can manipulate your independent variable, but wala kang control sa participants mo and sa environment ng experiment mo. For example, a field experiment conducted by Cunningham wherein he wants to know if what kind of conversation starter does men or women prefer. So, sinabihan niya yung one group of college students na try to approach people of their opposite sex and just say hi or hello sa kanila. Yung kabalang group naman, they were instructed to give flirty introductions like, parang kamukha mo yung next girlfriend or boyfriend ko. Or, Naniniwala ka ba sa love at first sight? Is a second sight. So they all went to seven different bars and they started to approach random people. What they found out is that most women at the bar prefer simple introductory like hi or hello. Mas nakakatch ng mga lalaki ang attention ng girls kapag ganito ang sinasabi nila. Whereas yung mga lalaki naman sa bar, they don't really care kung pa paano ang approach ng mga babae sa kanila. They respond positively sa kahit simple or flirty introduction. So, pro tip lang sa mga guys natin. If you ever want to catch a girl's attention, huwag niyong gagayahin si John Lloyd. Hi lang sapat na. As you can see, class, we manipulated the independent variable, which is kung paano mag-a-approach yung mga college students. But the subjects didn't know that they are in an experiment. And we have no control sa environment or yung bar. Kung saan mo kinukundak yung experiment. Okay, so next naman, we have archival studies. Archival study is a descriptive research method in which already existing records are re-examined for new purposes. Common examples of archival research sources are census records or survey data that was collected in the past. Pwede natin ito magamit kapag, for example, Gusto mong malaman if mas tumaas ba ang kaso ng depression sa isang mental institution. Pwede natin tignan yung records nila from the past and compare it ngayon para malaman kung tumaas pa or bumaba yung depression cases ngayon. And lastly, class, we have qualitative research. It is concerned with understanding human behavior from the informant's perspective. Data are collected through observing and interviewing of participants, and it relies on words rather than numbers for the data being collected. For example, conducted by researcher Peng Lingvist and his colleagues, they wanted to understand the variety of reactions that families had on the suicide committed by a member of their family. They interviewed the families of 10 teenage suicide victims. The interviews were relatively unstructured, free flow lang yung conversation nila. And what they found out is that one of the most important themes that emerged from these interviews was that even as life returned to normal, the families continued to struggle with the question of 
why their loved one committed suicide. This struggle appeared to be especially difficult for families in which the suicide was most unexpected. Okay, so class, those are the five common non-experimental approaches used by psychologists. I hope you have learned a lot in this video. If you did, class, kindly like, share, and subscribe. And our next topic will be all about experimental research design. God bless everyone.